Hello, everyone. In this presentation, I would like to share some of the main findings of a study I have carried out with members of my research group on religious experience and altered states of consciousness at the Pontifical Catholic University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. It is an investigation with practitioners of different mediumistic religions in Brazil concerning their help-seeking patterns and sources of social support to cope with negative anomalous experiences. Many studies suggest that the psychosocial support offered by family and religious groups is fundamental in coping with negative anomalous experiences. The investigation of help-seeking patterns and sources of social support may provide relevant information for differentiating between pathological and non-pathological anomalous experiences. In a spiritualist study carried out with spiritualist mediums from the UK, Roxburgh and Rowe highlighted the impact of the family and social contest in the reporting of anomalous experiences. When mediums had grown up in environments uh, unfavorable to their anomalous experiences, for example, a Christian family uh, who saw the experiences as examples of diabolical possession, these individuals tended to report more suffering and disorientation in relation to their experiences, at least until they found a contest that welcomed their mediumistic accounts. The authors also found that the mediums tended to avoid mental health services and treatments for fear of being stigmatized. There are many types of support, for example, from, from family, peers, psychologists, psychiatrists, members of the religious group, uh, but there is little specification in the existing literature uh, of how different social contexts uh, and sources of social support may impact these experiences. A systematic assessment of the experience's life history is also recommended since the positive or negative impact of anomalous experiences may vary according to life stage. For example, uh, in a case study with a Brazilian medium, Del Monte and collaborators found that the negative appraisals of anomalous experiences changed to positive ones when the medium received the support of a religious group during adulthood. With these aspects in mind, we investigated the help-seeking patterns and sources of social support reported by members of mediumistic religions in Brazil, including Umbanda, an African-derived religion, Kardecist Spiritism, and Valley of the Dawn, a spiritualist order which combines elements from Christianism, indigenous religions, and New Age esotericism. Uh, we also investigated the emotions uh, associated with their first anomalous experiences and the contest and period in which these experiences initially emerged, uh, that is, whether before or after attending a mediumistic religion and at which moment in their lives. Uh, from initial ethnographic observations in different mediumistic religions, uh, these ethnographic observations were described in a previous study, we obtained the contact information of potential respondents to whom we submitted an online survey developed specifically for this study. The invitation to participate was sent either directly to the members of these groups or through their religious leaders who helped to disseminate the survey. The survey assessed several aspects of their religious uh, experiences, uh, their mediumship, such as when mediumistic experiences began in their lives, and whether this was before or after the respondents began attending a religious group, the support received from different social groups to practice mediumship, the emotions associated with their first anomalous experiences, and patterns of help-seeking help in difficult moments. 
The sample comprised 263 mediums, mainly from the city of Sao Paulo. Uh, and the majority of the sample uh, was composed of uh, female participants. 14% were, 65% uh, were members of Umbanda, 14% were spiritists, 3% were members of the Valley of the Dawn, and 1% belonged to esoteric groups that also practice mediumship. More than two thirds of the respondents reported more than five years of mediumship practice, while 46.8% were mediums for more than 10 years. So they have had many years of practice when they were interviewed. Uh, now moving on to the results, we found that anomalous mediumistic experiences were more often associated with positive emotions. For example, tranquility, peace, happiness. Still, the most reported emotion was fear. Uh, with 43.3% of respondents choosing that word. 64% of the sample used positive words to describe their first anomalous experiences, such as enthusiasm and inspiration, with an average of 2.8 positive words chosen by respondents, while 59.3% used negative words, such as sadness or confusion or fear, with an average of 1.7 negative words. Uh, when mediumistic experiences began in adulthood and already within a religious contest, participants reported having experienced fewer negative emotions in relation to their anomalous experiences compared to the occasions when these experiences began in childhood and adolescence. When the experience is initiated before the participants started attending a religious contest, the emotions associated with the first mediumistic experiences were more negative in comparison to when mediumistic experiences emerged already within a religious contest. The opposite is also true with positive emotions being more prevalent within the religious group uh, than outside of it. Participants also reported that with time and religious practice, the frequency of anomalous experiences occurring during religious services augmented in comparison to those occurring outside the religious contest. With regard to social support and encouragement received from other people to practice mediumship, <clears throat> the attitudes of the father brothers and friends was, were described as predominantly indifferent. The attitudes of the mother, spouse or partner and members of the respondent's religion were often described as positive. When asked about the sources of help served to deal with different personal and interpersonal problems, the spiritual religious help was mentioned more frequently uh, in comparison to other options, medical, psychological, friends, family, etc. The spiritual help was described as more important than psychological help to cope with emotional problems, which was an interesting finding. But medical help predominated over spiritual help in relation to physical problems. 51.3% reported having received psychological treatment at some point in their lives, and 22% uh, received psychiatric treatment. 82.1% stated that they had never used psychiatric medication. 12.6% currently do not use it, but have used it in the past, and 5.2% use it daily. So the majority of participants uh, never used a psychiatric medication uh, uh, to deal with their interpersonal, emotional, psychological problems. Our findings indicate that anomalous experiences are not always related with negative emotions, but that this can vary according to uh, the moment they emerged in the individual's life and the degree of social support received, especially from members of a religious group. This is in accordance with other studies showing that mediumistic experiences are often beneficial 
Psychological interventions directed at helping individuals cope with negative, uh, negative aspects of anomalous experiences should, should consider the social context and the experience's life history. Seligman, among other authors, argued that mediumistic practice is an important source of meaning and social support, offering a symbolic framework that allows the resignification of experiences from a religious or spiritual perspective. This process of resignification is presumed to have uh, an important therapeutic function by naming and explaining experiences in relation to it, the individual was previously frightened and or confused. Also, this stereotype of mental illness is contested by the religious group, enabling the assumption of a defined and socially valued religious or spiritual role, that of the medium. Few respondents claim that others were unfavorable uh, in relation to the practice of mediumship. The total support average was 3.32, uh, uh, and this number corresponded mainly to the indifferent option. In terms of family support, the holes of the mother and spouse or partner were reported as predominantly positive, but the religious group was the mo most important source of social support. These findings may suggest that more important than the whole of family is the whole of a religious group, perhaps in offering a meaning framework and specific spiritual practice and, and beliefs that help the individual understand and exert control over the experiences. However, it should be stressed that this may vary according to cultural context. Brazil is a highly religious country with high rates of endorsement of paranormal beliefs and reports of anomalous experiences uh, based on, on different surveys carried out here. We can uh, conclude with this high endorsement rate. More research is needed in this regard to ascertain the cross-cultural consistency of our findings. It is noteworthy that participants mentioned it uh, turning to spiritual help more often than other forms of help to cope with their problems. In particular, respondents reported giving less importance to psychotherapy and psychiatry when compared to spiritual help. This can either reflect the stigma of mental illness concerning the report of anomalous experiences or the fear that spiritual dimension of their experiences will be denied or reduced to psychological or physiological factors. These findings indicate the importance of mental health professionals to consider uh, the topic of anomalous experiences in their practice, uh, informing themselves about the evidence available and seeking ways to positively advise the experiencers, possibly in dialogue with members of the religious community to which they belong. This approach is in line with a biopsychosocial view of mental health and physical health, and perhaps also with a more holistic approach in which the spiritual aspect is also taken into consideration. But our study also had some limitations. Our sample was biased toward highly educated Brazilians, most of them women, and with significant levels of religious involvement, many years of mediumship practice. A sample with lower religious involvement and a different demographic profile could evidence different results. Despite these limitations, the present study was the first one to evaluate the help-seeking patterns and sources of social support of individuals experiencing anomalous experiences in Brazil, as well as the emotions associated with such experiences. Thank you very much for your attention.